Welcome back to Harbaugh. President Trump is lashing out over reports revealing the extent of the Russian-sponsored ad campaign on Facebook during the 16 election. He now says the social media company actually worked against him, suggesting that Facebook also colluded with other media outlets. Quote, Facebook was always anti-Trump. The networks were always anti-Trump. Hence, fake news. The New York Times and Washington Post were anti-Trump. Collusion? Well, this comes as Politico reports that a number of Russian-sponsored ads on Facebook were designed to peel support away from Hillary Clinton among left-wing voters. Some backed Bernie Sanders and his platform even after his presidential campaign had ended. Furthermore, Jill Stein was the beneficiary of at least one of the Russian political ads, according to a person with knowledge of the ad. It said, choose peace and vote for Jill Stein. Trust me, it's not a wasted vote. Well, the Hill, the Capitol Hill newspaper, is reporting late tonight that the Senate Intelligence Committee has invited Facebook to testify in an open hearing. NBC News also reports that representatives from Twitter will meet with both intelligence committees tomorrow. I'm joined right now by Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwa of California, who sits on the House Intel Committee. Congressman, I am overwhelmed because I'm looking at numbers in the last campaign that shows how Jill Stein, a minority candidate who only got a few votes, made the difference in states like Michigan, where she got 51,000 votes. The margin there between Hillary Clinton and Trump was 11,000, five times the vote she took away from the, the battle between the top two. In Wisconsin, she got 31,000 votes. Uh, Trump won by 21,000. So if there was a conniving here, a strategy to destroy the election for Hillary by dividing up the left and center vote, it worked. My question to you, when they write the history of this campaign, will they write that the Russian involvement in dividing and conquering on the progressive side of the political, political spectrum was decisive? Uh, Chris, uh, good evening. Uh, and, you know, also uh, of note uh, here is the level of sophistication. I mean, the, the hashtag uh, on the post that you just read said, grow a spine, vote Jill Stein. That, that is an idiom, grow a spine. And idioms are often lost in translation, which makes you wonder if they had... Uh, help on the inside here. The smartest political scientist in Russia probably wouldn't understand how to use U.S. idioms to U.S. Uh, voters. And so I, I do think they weren't just lifting up Donald Trump and tearing down uh, Hillary Clinton. They were uh, trying to alienate uh, likely Clinton voters uh, and peel them off away. And so that's what we're seeking to understand. Do you know the technology which would allow us to prove what you just said or to find the truth there about whether how Facebook was used how smart Intel spotting on the ground, like you suggest, and knowing idioms and things like that, how that all worked together in terms of a collusion. How would you have to prove something like that? Yeah, well, one, one way we could do that is to look if advertisement A, the Jill Stein advertisement uh, that was funded by Russians, uh, if there is a similar or identical advertisement funded by another uh, foreign entity or a U.S. person, you could probably assume that uh, they were in some way working together but using uh, cutouts uh, to post it because $150,000 seems like a relatively low amount and the Russian way is to use cutouts and other sources uh, of funding. And so you can do that diagnostic uh, by you know, doing a pixel analysis. It's going to take a little bit of time, but that's one way uh, that better uh, be conducted. Let's take a look at something we sort of overlooked. I agree I'm part of the overlooked people. I overlooked it. Look at Jill Stein sitting there with Putin. I mean, Michael Flynn was there. He's on the left. Putin's in the middle. Jill Stein's sitting there all dressed up for a nice, fancy dinner, very comfortably there in Moscow with the head of the Russian government there. Uh, what do you make of that uh, courtship? You got to call it a courtship. Brought her over there, dined, wined and dined her, and then promoted her through Facebook, apparently. Well, they did. Yeah, I, frankly, Chris, I'd love to hear from uh, Jill Stein about why she was at that dinner and whether she had followed up at all uh, with any Russians. That would also uh, be helpful for us uh, in our investigation, knowing now that the Russians uh, sought to use uh, her candidacy uh, to also uh, tear down or take away votes uh, from Hillary Clinton. Well, I couldn't get her on hardball, but I guess Putin knew how to, uh, to get the big get. He got her over there. I couldn't get her here in Washington. She was a, I couldn't even get Gary Johnson here, who didn't know any world leaders. He couldn't name one world leader, but she wouldn't even come on this show, but she wouldn't mind hanging around with him. This is interesting stuff, that the Russians are sophisticated enough to divide the progressive side of the political spectrum to the detriment of the one progressive, Hillary, that could have won. Thank you very much, U.S. Congressman Eric Swalwell of California on the Intel Committee. Up next...
Training the swamp, Health Tech Secretary, Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price is under fire for taking taxpayer-funded private jets when he could have taken the regular commercial flight. He's not the only cabinet member under fire for the same reason, reportedly abusing the system. That's next with the roundtable. These guys are supposed to be cleaning the swamp. They're swimming in it. Watch the hardball.